I guess we're going to shoot this video again. Had uh, had some technical difficulties, so we're gonna we're gonna try hopefully breeze right through this. So, um, pardon my ignorance. Uh, I'm, I haven't fully identified how I want to approach my YouTube videos. I don't know if I should err on the side of just staying on topic or give all kinds of filler, because I go either way with the folks that I subscribe to on YouTube. There's some folks that I just like. I just like to listen to them talk because I find them interesting. And then there's other folks that go way off point, and I'm like, ah, it's driving me nuts. Can we please get to the point? So I haven't yet identified where I'm going to be on this spectrum. So bear with me. So we're we're gonna we're gonna try to push our way through this. So um, I guess for this this particular video, we're gonna err on telling a little bit of a story. I started with an OTF. The OTF starts right here for me. AKC F16. It was um, it was small. I ordered it because it was small, but I didn't realize when I got it in hand it would be this small. And it's so small that I thought, oh my goodness, I'm going to break that blade. It just felt thin. Very sharp. Not a single misfire. Not even once. The only time that it will quote-unquote misfire is when I'm holding it up against something and then try to deploy the blade. So I'm like, okay. Well, now I got the bug. I got a few extra bucks. Let's um, let's get some uh, other OTFs. So let's get the what seems to be the internet fave, and that's the uh, OTF Lightning, Main Taiwan. I got two of them. I thought that um, I couldn't get a black handle with a black blade, so I thought that I would buy one of each here and then swap handles. And I've just not got around to doing that. That may not even be possible. But um, I got a bigger, more sturdy blade. I'm not going to be breaking the blade. Um, however, now I feel like I'm going to break the handle. And I can tell you that this is the one I've been carrying. This is the one I've been saving at home. This is probably going to be a gift. And because I've been playing with it like nonstop, like a fidget spinner, it um, is really loose. And it's the blade's loose. Um, the, the switch is also loose. But when the blade's inside, it's fine. It's just when it's deployed. So I'm not sure. I haven't taken it apart. There's a little bit of slop in this. I mean, a little bit of play. But you, as you can see, you can barely see or hear that. This is crazy. We'll switch hands. Anyways, spending too much time on these. I thought, you know, these would be great, but you're basically counting on these two little tiny screws for s sandwiching aluminum, these aluminum halves, down on top of your blade, down on top of the blade, and that's where, that's where your strength is coming from. So I'm not saying that you should use this to pry, but um, it, you're not going to get too far. This is some sort of maybe aluminum. I don't know. It's soft, soft metal. Stainless here, supposedly. And uh, so, yeah, if you if you had to pry on something, <clears throat> obviously knives really shouldn't be used as pry bars. But if you had to, you're going to, you're probably going to, these little screws are going to pull right through this aluminum piece would be my guess. I don't know. I could be wrong. I need to figure out why it's so sloppy loose. I just noticed that a few days ago. So, anyways, I wanted something bigger, something heavier. Well, that's where we ended up here. And I saw some videos on YouTube. Um, I found a website that sells them. And I'm like, yes, that's perfect. I also saw um, a John Wick movie here recently. And John Wick had something like this in his hand. And he deployed that blade and he was ready to fight. And I'm like, I, that's what I need. That's what I need. And I started looking at bigger versions of this, if it even existed, but then I don't know, one thing led to another and I found these. I'm like, oh my goodness, this could be what I'm asking for. So, um, they arrived like three and a half days after I order, ordered them, which I was very impressed with the shipping. They came from grind, grindworks.com. Um, they came with these these cases. This you know, this came with that and this came with this one. So, um, But right away when I picked it up, I'm like, why is that so heavy? That's ridiculous how heavy this is. Like crazy, you know... Um, I've got <clears throat> knives that are similar in size that are significantly lighter. 
with more blade. You know, so so anyways, um, the the weight was so much that it actually prompted me to go get a scale. So here's the scale. I've got the uh, the scale set to show grams. Looks like I need to tear it. Okay, we're zeroed. What 265, 264, 265. 265 grams. One seventy five. Telling you what, if I was in a knife fight, this all the way. <laughs> this all the way. I can um, I can open and close this with one hand, and I'm much faster with it. Uh, give me give me one sec. Okay, so um, this is the Tonto version of that. This is the one I've been carrying, and. I'm going. I'm going to demonstrate something here real quick. Um, so hopefully we can get me in frame. Pardon the mess. I got stuff everywhere. Lots of projects going on. So here is here's the. Uh, oh, by the way, this is called the Atomic. I think it's called the Atomic Defender. So, anyways, well, I'm getting way off track here, aren't I? So here's the knife, it's in my pocket. I want to get it ready, boom. Closing it, it's kind of a challenge, but I got it. Okay. All right, now watch, watch this. This is a folding knife, by the way. So there's my knife, there it is, it's out, it's ready to go. I'm gonna close it, no problem, the back. I'm faster with this than I am with my switch blades, which is kind of nuts. Okay, so why are we here? We're not here to talk about all this craziness. We're here to talk about these knives. So, as I was saying, I noticed how heavy they were. What would we say? Two hundred sixty-five um, grams. Gr grams. So. A better, more durable, more reliable knife, 183 grams, 184. Here's the Lightning OTF, 110 grams, okay? That one's 109. Should be identical, could be the scale, it's not very accurate, it's not a high dollar scale by any means. Okay, so, so I noticed the weight was off and then I noticed man that is hard it's so hard to open and close and one of the one of the benefits to OTFs is it gives you something to play with it's kind of like a it's kind of like a, a fidget spinner if you will for people who carry knives yeah that's that's hard that's hard and I suspect that the average person is going to have a term, hard time getting that blade out and even way harder time pulling it back in. So I made a modification um, on the the spring in there. And there we go. That's This is with the spring modification. And basically, all I did is I took that spring. It's about like this long under X amount of tension. And I made it just a little bit longer. It gives it significantly less tension, but still enough to deploy the blade. That is so much easier now. I could do this all day, and this, this knife was a pain in the ass. It was such a pain in the ass that it had me thinking, I may not do anything with this knife. I was thinking I might just give it away as a gift. In fact, that's what I was thinking with all these knives, is I would just experiment with them, document them, make, maybe upload some videos to YouTube, and then share them with the world. Have a little bit of fun, and um, I thought no one's going to want this. This, you know, I have I have someone in particular who I think would like everything about this knife, but the deployment. I think he would put up with the weight, and that it's it's kind of a ridiculous size. It's a good big big knife, um, but I the, the button alone. I just don't think he was going to go for the button. The button being ridiculous like that. And here we are. I, I'm suddenly excited about these knives. I 
feel like I can hand these to people, hand it to friends. Hey, check this out. Hey, have you seen these yet? You know, this was 40 or 50 bucks on such and such website. So, yeah, these are, I'm liking this now. So, anyways, we're going to do that to this guy. We're going to do the same modification. Now, it's not quite as snappy. It even probably sounds a little different to the microphone. This is snap, snap. And this is like snap, snap. It's a, it's a little lazier. It's still fast. It's fast enough. It's fast enough to get the blade out and to get the blade back. So if you understand how the mechanics of this work, <clears throat> basically that, that's what we're up against. When the engineers designed this or when they stole the idea for this from Microtech, they probably had to do a little bit of engineering themselves. You want the spring tight enough to pull the blade out. But you want it snappy so it snaps out reliably. Sometimes you can get the blade in a bind a friction bind and then it has a little too much friction coming out so it doesn't quite slide out all the way and I've heard people call that a misfire but if you have enough strength on the spring you can overcome that you can push on through and normally normally these knives don't misfire I, as a matter of fact this one has never misfired this AKC F16 never once it's always come out the only times it has not is when I was holding stuff up to it like a, like a piece of paper or paper cup or whatever. These misfired like 10% of the time when I first got them. But the more I mess with them, the less they misfire. I'm not even sure the last time this one's misfired because I've been playing with it so much. However, now it's loose. I need to figure out what, what's causing that looseness in there. So... Um, all right, so back to, back to these guys. Um, you know, and I, I suppose there's another, another thing here is you, you need to assign a value. Um, if you don't have enough spring tension or enough spring travel, it may not deploy the blade out all the way, even if it's not in a bind, even if, even if you're in a vacuum in space. However, you can go to the other end of the spectrum and you can have too much force. And what the problem may be is that your thumb isn't strong enough. And I mean, I'm telling you, I've got, I'm building these crazy calluses up playing with all these OTFs because my thumbs are getting beat up. And it's still hard for me to do this. Out isn't that big of a deal. In is not comfortable. It, it hurts. Um, I can push a lot easier than I can pull in this situation. Like, see there, I can't get it there. I got it finally. But I mean, I really had to strain. That's not going to be the case here because I've, I've stretched that spring out. Um, you know, another thing is if we have, if our spring is too tight, not only is it harder than hell to push against the spring or to pull against the spring. But it's actually, it's actually possible that it can snap so hard that it bounces, fires out, and then ricochets back in before the lock mechanism comes down and keeps it in a position. It's possible that the blade can fly out and back in. So you got to have a balance point. I, I think they erred on too much tension. That's too hard. That's way too hard. That's that's the that's as fast as I can possibly go with my left hand. I'm gonna see it. I'm gonna do like I'll do three uh, deployment and retraction cycles. One, two, three. I mean, that's me giving it my all. Here's this knife. I guess I did four. So as you can see, that's much easier. It's it's still durable. It's still reliable. It's still coming out like it should. And we got, we got something here I think we can work with. I'm liking that. I think that's, that's pretty sweet. I am happy. All right, so there's 15 minutes of this video, and I've not done what I said I'm going to do. But I guess I've explained everything leading up to this moment. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to deploy the blade. I'm going to gr gently grab the blade. i got to be careful. This is a dagger, so I'm just basically pinching like so. And I'm going to unlock it, but not let it fly in. So we take the tension off. Um, I'm going to slide this over here. 
Um, I got really lucky on the other knife. I got I got the I got the spring tension right because let's face it, if you if you stretch it too far, you're done. Your knife is not going to do what it's supposed to do. You're going to be tracking down a spring, and you're not going to get a warranty um, from a, a retailer, wholesaler, or the manufacturer because you damaged the spring trying to make modifications. So you're going to need to be very careful. I meant to stretch it less, to be completely honest with you. And I'm, I'm going to try to do it a even a little less here than I did before on the other knife. But we'll see. Kind of hard to tell really what's going on in there. So I'm going to go ahead and pop the sh shell off. There we are. There's the spring. That's what it looks like before we stretch it. To stretch it, I just I'm just gonna take it off of this guy. But that's a lot of tension. As you can see, I can maybe I can measure that. Um, I'm using the metric system. The back of the hook to the outside edge right here. And I'm pulling tight without pulling on the spring. Looks like it's about 18 millimeters. As you can see, I'm, pull, I'm measuring from the hook to right about here. Right? And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to demonstrate how hard this is to hook. Let me zoom back out here a little bit. That, I mean, that requires quite a bit of effort uh, to hook that guy. As you can see, when I, when I push up on the tab, how much it sprung forward. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the spring off, and I'm just going to pull, freehand pull it. All right, we're going to go back. Remember, I'm being I'm very, being careful, very careful. Okay, so I know we lost some of our string strength, but I don't I don't know how much. We're gonna take a measurement. We we're at twelve. Twelve millimeters. No, make that. 13 and a half, 13 and a half millimeters. So that's not as far as I went on the other knife. We're going to try that first and see how that feels. So we're going to slap this in, put this piece on. I'm just going to see if I can get away with just putting one screw in. Now, nah, I should do I should do two. Um, one on either end. And caddy corner. We're going to go ahead and pull it tight. Oh boy, that is way better. Way better. So much better. As you can see, we're not having uh, we're not having any misfires. It's it's coming out like it should. It's going back like it should. I knew I can come up with something. I am so happy. That's a knife that I can carry now. I mean, it's still heavy. But I can, I can deal with that. Um, I really wanted a glass breaker. Um, but I know it's adding weight. And I, I know this big clip is adding weight. And i got to have a pocket clip. I honestly thought about taking, taking it to like a grinder. 
maybe grinding. I wouldn't grind off the top. Um, because of all, I don't know. I felt like I didn't want to weaken. The, the top's already pretty thin. I didn't want to, and also didn't want to weaken where the screws um, sit down in these holes here. I didn't want to interfere with that too much. Also, I felt like the traction I was getting over here might be important. But the traction over here is not super important. We've got um, this for a little bit of, well, that slides around, doesn't it? That's not very, that's not very solid. I don't know. I've really been trying to think of ways that I could lighten it up a little bit. You know, I, th I thought that, you know, maybe this weird curve could be eliminated. Um, but this curve here, this curving out is re actually reinforcing the pinching mechanics on this enclosure that holds the blade in position. And I thought, well, maybe I could remove this curve but then I thought well I kind of need that because it's so hard to open and close but now I don't need it um, you could see how close to the edge they got with the screw here you know what man if they just would have went with a lighter spring they wouldn't need to do that but I think that I think that they were going after a microtech design and you know I, I was having misfires occasionally I'd say one out of 30 attempts to uh, deploy the blade, it was misfiring. And the more I mess with them, I think the more likeliness of a misfire goes down. I don't know what it is, but it just seems like it goes down. So anyways, I feel like that's, that might be good. Let's see how it, how does it compare? Oh, that's buttery smooth on this one. You can, you can hear, actually that's an unfair assessment. This does not have its screws all back in, so it's gonna sound a little different. Man, I am tempted. Switch hands. I'm tempted to go ahead and stretch stretch that spring out just a little bit more to make it even more easy. I really like how easy that is. It is so easy. It's crazy how easy that is. Yeah, and we lost a lot of our power um, before I would have been able to pun puncture through that, that paper and not so much now. Also, I'm able to flip it around easier when we, when, like, like when we have a, a misfire. It's so much easier to lock it in a position now. Man, that is slick. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go ahead and stretch that out just a little bit more. We're gonna take the uh, take the spring off. I just lose screws. One, two, three, four. Okay, I got them all. And again, obviously, I you know I, I go ahead and blab a little bit here, so I don't have dead dead air. But clearly. I'm running a risk. I can take this too far. I can make this fire. Um, I can take its ability to pull the um, the knife out the handle if I'm not careful, or pull it back in. So let's uh, see what we got now. At rest, what did we have earlier? Um, 12, 13 millimeters. What do we got now? Now we've got 
eight, eight millimeters. I'll tell you something I'm going to do. This is probably unnecessary at this point, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of grease on that spring. Just a teeny tiny little bit to help with the noise. It's not for lubricant purposes. There's way less grease on there than what it looks like. It's just a tiny little thin coating. I'm gonna go ahead and rub it into the spring. And it's really just to help the noise. I'm gonna go ahead and put some here. And I'm gonna rub just a tiny little bit right here. You know, and this, it's no wonder I freaking can get into these things. There's, um, there's so, so many little ways to handle doing stuff with these. Just like when I was a kid, I really liked the Lego stuff because you can modify and you have to, well, first of all, you have to build, conceptualize and build and uh, tear it apart and do it again or come up with your own creations. There we go. So again, I'm just gonna go with two screws. One end down there. And I'm choosing the corner that is helping pinch the button together. Um, and then we're gonna do caddy corner, the opposite end. All right, so. There we go. Okay, now we're, oh yeah. That's the sweet spot. I like it. I do. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna apply a little bit of Loctite And you can overdo Loctite. I might even be doing that now. But with as much shock that's going on with these knives, I would highly recommend Loctiting these if you are going to take them apart. Um, just a fair warning, I used too much Loctite on this knife when I first got it. And it actually got um, into the track. Into the track for the knife and it dried up and it, it was a gummy mess. I had to take the whole thing apart. Oh my god, I almost lost one. That would be an excellent conclusion to this video is me losing a freaking screw. So we're at 28 minutes and 50 seconds. We're just about done. Talk about perfect timing. One last thing I want to do, I want to tighten this up. to use Loctite. I can't believe they didn't Loctite that. Those threads are dry. Okay. Rut row. What is going on? I had this issue with my other knife. There we go. For some reason, the lock is not. <clears throat> the lock wasn't unlocking.
So there we go. Um, I might have taken it too far on this knife. I might have taken the spring tension out just a little too much, or maybe I've got Loctite in the track or something somehow. It doesn't quite feel consistent. I mean, I've deployed it, what, 20 times now since putting the last, since tightening this up. As you can see, I got Loctite everywhere. Okay, maybe not everywhere, but it's getting, it's, it's oozing out down here um, somehow. Anyways, I like it. I think it's I think it's good to go. I think it's going to be fine. That's that's this one smoother. I might have to reevaluate what happens. Why why is this one smoother and snappier than this one? It's almost like um, on this one pulling back doesn't want to, it doesn't want to disengage the lock. Until I'm like way down here at the bottom and then it barely, I'll just see if I can demonstrate that. Try to keep my fingers out of the path. Nah, I think it's fine. So anyways, that is all I got for this video.